recording on this computer. Okay, so now today we're going to go over this multifamily evaluator spreadsheet. And this is something you guys can use. It's in the forms um, folder that I've sent you a couple of times. If you don't have that, you're going to want to save it. You'll, it'll, you'll see it under a tool. Um, and there's one labeled single family, but this is the one we use for multifamilies. Um, so everything in light green is something that you are going to fill out. Everything in white should be uh, calculated for you based on the green things. So we are going to be on, on line one, property one, which is actually on line three, right? But um, we're just going to pretend, right? I'm going to use some numbers and change these. But so first thing you're going to do is tell me how many units are in the building. Um, this will only really work with about eight units. So when I get more than eight units, to me, it's not important to key in every single rent. I just put the gross annual rent in. So, you know, when you get there, we can we can work it out, right? Um, I'm going to pretend that somebody's going to use a conventional loan on this and they're going to pay a 25% down payment. So you would key in 25%. I'm going to change the purchase price on this one because I know that it goes with a building that I own and could sell at $550,000. So it's good. We're going to make it real life, right? Um, I already put the money in to repair this building. So at a purchase, like a client wouldn't have any repair expenses. So this is what you would do, right? Depending on the building you're looking at, you put the purchase price, you're going to list, if you think they're going to have to put in $50,000, you're going to put that in because it's going to be included in your calculations. So if they're okay with taking calculations based off just the purchase price, that's okay. But they, oh, put your speaker on mute. Um, yeah. One moment, please. <laughs> um, okay, good. No, turn your speaker, just turn your speaker off. You have two computers? Um, okay, I could also figure out how to mute myself, but I want it to be recorded, right? The, the, my voice. Okay, so next, thank you for the break. Um, <laughs> so if you are going to, um, in a, a part of the deal was, well, there's one unit that's not inhabitable, right? Uh, as a side note, on a conventional loan, if there's one unit that's not inhabitable, you couldn't buy that on a conventional loan. They Like there's no bathroom in it. Like that won't fly past the, um, past the underwriting process. But let's say, you know, whatever, buyer feels like they have to update the kitchen and bathroom, right? Um, you would put that repair expense in here. And so then, what that's going to do is in the either down payment or cash that you need to close is going to be here, um, whichever one it is. And it's based off of the 25% down payment multiplied by the purchase price. So in this case, $137,000, $5,000. Um, and then it's going to add up for you. So if I had repair expenses in there, it's going to add your all in price, right? So if it was $50,000 repairs and that's gonna be $600,000. Mm -hmm. So then the rents, I'm gonna leave these here. We would plug the rents in. These are actual rents in an apartment building of mine in Shaw. And that, is, so it's gonna calculate, you would plug these in, right? Off of your rental property verification sheet or off of the listing where you're finding that information. And then what it's gonna do is, I'm gonna move this over so that the units are to the left there. So it's going to calculate that I have $4,100 monthly gross monthly rent coming in to this building. Um, and so I did this on a monthly basis because I, that's what I wanted to see both monthly and annually. And honestly, I could redo the whole thing um, and it would be easier because most of our listings are um, we're getting annual numbers, but I just haven't redone it. And so it's um, some, some clients think in terms of monthly payments. So um, that's what we do. So what you're gonna see in these next columns is if something comes to you in an annual number, you gotta divide it by 12. So um, mortgage principal and interest, I'm sorry, principal and interest right, is what that should say, right? Um, so why do I do that? That is the amount of, of principal and interest only that the a loan would be paying. 
Now that's not calculating it. You have to type that in. So you're going to go use a loan calculator on a 25% down loan, whatever the interest rate is, and pick up the principal and interest only, not taxes and insurance, yeah. because then you can use that calculation for many things, right? And because you're also going to put your real estate taxes per each building in the following columns. Mm -hmm. So 261, if you look into my you know, where the formulas go up at the top there. Can you see where I'm pointing? Yeah. So my annual taxes are 31, 36, 98. I divided it by 12 just to keep us all on the same playing field, right? Same thing for the insurance premium. It's 17, 38. I divided it by 12. Management, I happen to know I pay 150 a month or actually it's it's different now, but whatever. Um, it is $50 a building plus 24 a unit. So that's what I did um, 50 plus 25 times C3. C3 is where I put the total number of units, right? So if your building uh, that you're looking at has a management fee listed on it, you could put that, it'll be annual. You could put that in here and divide it by 12. Or if you wanted to, I, I just wouldn't even calculate it in, right? Like Unless a a, a clients want you to do it. And then I would say, what is your management fee that you're going to use? Because what they're paying for the one they're using isn't necessarily equal to what your client's going to pay. But so for sake of it, right, I'm going to leave that at 150. Um, maintenance here for me, I just put lawn, but I honestly, it's not valuable to me when, with working with clients. Usually you don't see that you see, um, you might see if there's maintenance that you have to pay every month, that was lawn service, right? So that's, I put 75 because they come twice a week in the summer or twice a month in the summer for six months only, right? Um, and that's just for me to see how many dollars I should be getting in my pocket. Um, for that, th those are additional things that, you know, is going to come out in property management, not just the property management fee, but you know, some people will want to calculate 5% of the rent for that. There's a lot of ways to do it, but it, it, I don't find a great way to do it with like exact math, right? Um, because 5% is kind of arbitrary. If you have a fully renovated building, it's going to be better. Um, if you have a lower quality building, it might be more, it might, you know, just, you, you know, you also have when you, buy a new building and you put a new property management in place, it seems to trigger people to submit work orders because they forgot that they were gonna ask for whatever light bulb to be changed or something until they were told their new property manager's method for submitting work orders, right? So water and trash in the city of St. Louis come in a common bill mm -hmm. um, and it is quarterly. So you'll see up in the, this is where you have to do the math. I, can't, I wish I could tell you, right? A different way to do it. Um, I add there, this particular one, I knew the annual numbers, right? So I added 652 to 818, one's the water, one's the trash, and I divided by 12. If I was looking at a bill, I would multiply it by four because it happens four times a year. Makes sense? Because mm -hmm. they're quarterly bills, right? Um, and then sewer is a monthly bill. I got a 2019 was the annual number. You can see that up here again. And then I divided it by 12 to get a monthly number. I only have TV, internet, electric, and gas here because I also run Airbnbs and I keep for myself, you know, you have to pay for the internet there, you know, those kind of things. There is the occasional building where you have to pay some water sewer, I mean, some gas or electric but it's not, um, TV is not even, I shouldn't even be a column anymore, right? Um, so then if we look, we're gonna scroll over some more cause there's a lot going on here. But what we come to then is our annual gross income. Remember what, remember that term from earlier? Mm -hmm. So that's the total amount of money this building makes me in a year, right? Um, the other thing I can do with this, if I, if I believe that the rents are below market I can go do one line for current and one line for what's called pro forma, right? Which means, oh, well, now the neighborhood rents are $1,200 for a one bedroom unit. So what if one day I, what if I'm able to get to 1200 for each of these four units? What do my numbers look like then? And that's something you will be helping people do, right? That's a, an opportunity people are looking for. So then 
my um, my calculation here does a net income, right? It it does a little extra because of the way I put all the expenses in. So it collects all of the expenses at an annual level and or at a monthly level and multiplies them for the year and then subtracts them from the purchase price or from the gross income, sorry, which is AF12, uh, AF3. And then multiplies by 12. And so then you have a 39,000 um, operating income, on, net operating income on this building. The other thing, because clients always wanna know this is, well, now remember, we are pretending that this is a 787 principal and interest. If we did this, I could show you this. Let's see if I can quickly. Um, if I go to mortgagecalculator.org, I can go down here. I can say the home value is 500,000, oh, 550, right? That's our number, 550. And we're gonna see, oops, we're gonna see the difference. I didn't mean to do that. Yeah, um, we are going to put 25% down, right? So the loan amount is gonna be 416. This is a, probably an okay interest rate for right now. It's gonna be a 30 year mortgage. I am going to take out the property taxes because remember we're not doing that, right? Um, I'm not gonna have any PMI because I'm paying 25% down. I'm not putting my home insurance in because I'm already putting it in my other calculator, right? So it's a conventional loan, 30 year term, Com uh, not compare loan types, this thing's tricky, calculate. And once you calculate, then right here, 2685.97 is your loan right. So 2685 is what I'm gonna put in here, 2685. So now this is super realistic. Plus your real estate taxes, plus your insurance premium will become your payment. So now, this building went from making me, if I put a loan on it, right? Let's do that for one second. It was something like, I forget after the mortgage, but now the cash flow after mortgage on this half million dollar bill, building is eight, almost $8,000. So, but this is what our clients are looking at right now, right? Mm -hmm. But so also cap rate on the cost is 7%. It's in the Shaw neighborhood. Mm -hmm really a lot of buildings over there selling for like 6%, right? So the cash on cash return. So the cash out of pocket was my down payment of 137. Um, I'm going to earn 28% of that money every year. Um, let me just look at that for a second. Hang on. Look at that. Net operating income. F3. Yeah. Yep. So 28% is, uh, is correct. Um, per unit cost, coincidentally, it is 137.5. Why? Because there's four units and um, that's what it is. That's what 25% of that building is. So then this, I just use, I've been using it for myself, right? You're not going to sell it in the future. Th I mean, with this one, this building, right, would be a market rate building. You're not buying it with value to add. But if you were, say you're buying a $100,000 building, you're going to put 150 into it, and you think it's going to be worth 550 afterwards, you could put 550 in here, put your loan balance. But we know our loan balance is going to be 416,250. 416,250. I should probably make these light, right? Uh, light orange or something. And let's say your interest rate is 6.7. See how things have changed since I did this? Mm -hmm. um, so I did this, just not calculating anything. I just track my buildings that way, right? So I know how much I owe on my loan. I know what my interest rate was. And if I were to close and sell at this amount, I would basically get out my down payment, right? And if I sold it at that, it would be a 7.09. But so you can see some of these others as another example. Um, this second building was the second building I ever purchased, right? I purchased it. This is real numbers. I purchased it at $74,000. It's a four unit also. I repaired it with about $50,000. Um, I had to put $18,000 down at closing. Actually, I think it was 15%, but um, the first time I bought it, right? Um, 
and I'm all in for, I was $124,000 into this building. It is renting like this now. This is a midterm unit. This $1,200 is $1,200 a month. So this building that I bought for $74,000 and have $124 total dollars into, um, it grosses me $32.50 a month. That is its real mortgage um, because I refinanced in December 2021. That's its real taxes. This is in a C neighborhood, much lower taxes and insurance on this building because of its value. It's managed, um, it's actually managed for 190 a month now. I switched companies. Um, and there's my water, my sewer, right? I pay internet because of the midterm person. And I pay, I put 50 in for electric and gas because I also pay for the utilities for my midterm person. And they ebb and flow, you know, seasonally, they come and go. So I just put like 50 bucks a month. I was okay with that number, right? Like for me to just see what's happening. So this building on the books um, gets me almost $40,000 gross, net operating income of 28,000. And after my mortgage, look at the difference in that, right? Mm -hmm. It's 21,000 cash flowing. This is why I won't put a loan on my building up there. Um, my cap rate is 23.18%. Wow. Um, and that's why I do buy renovate <laughs> finance, wow. right? Um, versus buying this one up here is buying in today's retail market. So this was also a 2016 buy. Um, you won't find that anymore. Right. This building. So here's an, an, another way to look at this, right? Cash on cash return 47. And I've had this for set six, seven years. Um, it's a seven forty-seven percent cash on cash return because I, if you remember, one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars is what I put in, and I make twenty-eight cash clean. Well, twenty-one cash clean. Um, so per unit cost of thirty-one thousand. My after value repair. I, this is what I would sell it at today. If I sold it at two fifty, which I'm not going to sell it. Um, the, with a loan balance of roughly 115 at a 3.125, I would have $135,000 cash out and, and the buyer would be receiving 11.5%. Now in Dutchtown, which is where this is, it's the one that you went to, mm -hmm. that you visited me at. Mm -hmm. um, I would say probably an 8% is where things are selling. But I think to get an 8%, I'd really be pushing it to try to sell this at 280. Oh, wow. Yeah, I wouldn't. It, there's there's a threshold where you just can't get it. Um, it's just not going to sell at that price point, even though it's got a good cap rate. Like I couldn't sell this for 325. I don't think it would be able and that would be an 8%. That's kind of where those buildings are selling. If I could sell that at that, I'd sell it. I'd probably sell it. <laughs> um, so anyway, I think it, it appraised in last December no it appraised in December of 2021 at 230 so I know it's worth more than that now but mm -hmm. but so for it to go from 75 to 230 is what is catches my attention yeah. and that's the kind of thing that you want to demonstrate um no so this is a this is you're looking at second line there is a risk taker right like I know the neighborhood. I feel confident about what I can do in it. I didn't mind to spend a little bit of money to see where I could get. Would I ever fathom that this would be worth 250? Never in 2016 did I imagine that, mm. right? Um, not until I refied it, actually. Um, so I also do some things. This is just for me, right? Like if you were, if somebody was going to sell it, they can plan on commissions, right? So you would have to pay uh, 15%. And this is actually completely bogus numbers. Um, you'd have to have your accountant figure out what your basis is, but like for my, you know, for my little Mickey mouse kind of a viewpoint, I using the number that I, of money that I put in it, not anything I would have done over the six years, which would be my basis of spending. And basically you would subtract all of your capital investments to the building from the purchase price and the room that that capital investment will be your basis and then your sales price minus your basis is the amount that is taxable for the purpose of capital gains tax if you do not 
1031 exchange of building, right? Um, and so that explanation I gave you right there, I would be embarrassed to say it in front of my CPA. And I'm probably, uh, since I'm recording, I am not a CPA. Oh, I cannot provide financial advice. And this is a fifth grade math to give me an idea, right? And so I would know how much tax I might pay. Um, so, but I probably would never even go that. I, I actually call my accountant and I have right now, like every year he figures out the basis on my buildings. So I'm going to stop there for a second. Some other things. So just, I guess, before I stop. So let's say you're doing multiple properties, right? You could modify this any way you want, like take out some of the lines. Because what I did originally is I have this total at the bottom, right? So I know how many units I have. This isn't accurate, right? I would know how much total purchase price I've spent, how much uh, cash I've put in repairs, on the whole portfolio, right? What was my down payment, all in debt and cash. And the more important at this level to me was this. So if I go, I've got 12,000 a month coming in. I've, I've kind of been working towards a, a monthly number that kind of hit in my head I want. And uh, actually it's an annual, like a 250K is what I want, right? So here I'm at 144. If these, I don't even know if these numbers are right, right? But something like that, right? I've got gross 144K. Um, I should be seeing about 100K net. And um, after my mortgages, I got $11,000, right? But that's, uh, that's all kind of um, made up information. <laughs> I only have a couple of loans and these last two properties have nothing to do with their, their, they were for a client. But anyway, you could see like, oh, if, as you're adding to maybe one of your clients or you're doing it for yourself, you're adding buildings to this and keeping track real time. And you can, one hand, you, you know what your total is and you know what your outcome is. And as you're adding buildings, you know what your projected outcome is. And on the other hand, you can compare buildings, like which building do I like the best? Well, you'd think with net operating income, I might like this one the best, but um, because I've got a loan on it, I kind of like the second one the best, right? Mm -hmm. But so you can do that. You can also compare here. Like maybe I like one the best, but this one gives me the most return for my money. So maybe the second one is, but I've had, they don't always turn out the way you think, right? Like these two aren't too far off. Um, if I undid some of the other stuff, I, I would have thought that my top building was always my most interesting building because it had the biggest numbers, but um, some of the less expensive ones were better cap rates, even though they didn't produce as much net operating income. And so it's, you know, if you're thinking about taking money and spreading it across multiple buildings, you may, or a client may want to get the biggest return across the most number of buildings. Or they might be like, no, I just want it to be really stable. I'm okay with a 7% return because it's almost guaranteed, mm -hmm. right? Um, and less work for me. So it, that's why I say it's about figuring out what the buyer wants and helping them to achieve that. And sometimes it's doing this for them so they can see the difference between buildings and, and showing them how to do it themselves with the numbers that you provide them from the listings. Head spinning? Yeah. No. Just a tiny bit. <laughs> but it does make sense, though. I've seen this sheet before. I actually I saved it. I think you sent it to me. I think I sent it to you when we first started talking. Yeah, you did. Um, see if there's anything else we can do in 45 minutes that will be of value and fit into like 30 minutes. Um, so we can come back and do some case studies. We've talked a little bit about their buildings and systems. I think this number five is best done um, in a building, mm -hmm. right? And over time, um, I might put a presentation together on it at some point. Um, value add properties. I'm starting to make this presentation. I guess I should stop the recording here. Let's see. I'll have to doctor that up to take this out. Goodbye, uh, YouTube land. We'll see you later.